Hi there, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Prestige Liquids. My name is Andrew, and as always, it is fantastic to have you here with me again on another whiskey review video. I've been forced back inside again. Unfortunately, the neighbor has decided to cut their grass again. So I am going to be doing today's Starwood review inside. Now, full disclosure um, for this, um, Starwood have sent me um, this sample. Um, but the one thing that I always do appreciate about Starwood is that when, whenever they have sent me um, things to review, um, they've always allowed me my full freedom to be able to say whatever I have to say um, about the products. It's just always turned out that I've been quite fortunate as well that I generally have always enjoyed them. Um, but yeah, that's just, I'll get that out of the way. Um, this bottle has been provided to me by Starwood but um, I won't be letting that um, influence my opinion. So, um, a little bit of information about this. So, this is the Starwood Musket Cask. It has had a full um, four-year maturation in ex-musket casks. These casks have come from um, Rutherglen in Victoria. They have also used a combination of wet and filled charred barrels. Uh, this has also been bottled at 48% ABV, which is also one of my favorite um, ABV ranges. Uh, let's get this open, pour it into the glass, and see what we get. So, alrighty, uh, let's see what we get on the nose. So, cheers. So, straight away, really, the nose is nothing all that different to say the regular Starwood core range. I don't think you're really going to get anything that different. Um, it has the same like uh, black pepper spice to it, um, your red fruits. So think along the lines of um, like a bit of raspberry, a touch of strawberry. As it opens up, it does start to get a touch of like stewed fruits. A little bit of leather and tobacco. The Starwood banana is there. I will say though that I am starting to get a bit more of a like a stronger oakier influence to it than what I would typically get from a, a Starwood. Normally, say from the Starwood core range, you do get a lot more of a dominant um like the dominant red wine influence coming through but on this the i think the the oak influence and also a bit of that barrel char has been able to kind of express itself a little bit more All right so i'm also getting some things like stewed raisins um, one thing that i will also add when i tried this um, yesterday for the first time it did have quite a a bit of an intensity um, to the nose uh, but one thing that I actually really enjoyed about it is once you kind of like take a few sips and let the glass sit aside once the like the intensity of the alcohol kind of subsides you're left with like very strong um, like toffee and like burnt caramel um, kind of notes was which was actually um, very enjoyable and just kind of added a little bit more of a further dimension to the um, like to the overall like nosing experience um, but let's move on to the palette now and see what we get so cheers okay again you know that this is a starwood whiskey off the bat you're definitely getting that typical starwood dna i will say though that it does have a much higher added level of intensity it's quite spicy. Um, it's very spicy, um, very oaky. Instead of being getting that, instead of getting that black pepper note that I'm getting on the, that I had gotten on the nose, um, that has changed into more of a sharper white pepper. You're definitely going to notice the um, the oak influence. Overall, excellent syrupy mouthfeel. Uh, once that spice starts to go away, then it starts to open up a bit more. Now I'm getting quite a bit of um, vanilla, uh, a bit more caramel. It's, at the moment, it's actually reminding me quite a bit of a, like a very like spicy rye forward bourbon. 
you know, which is, yeah, like a bit odd. That's not really something that you would typically get from, say, like a, um, like a fortified cask. Normally, you would expect um, a stronger influence of the the stewed fruits. Um, but let's uh, let's go in a little bit more and see how it opens up. Once your palate is able to like acclimate to that um, to that spice, now this is um, bottled at say forty eight percent ABV as I mentioned before, but it the intensity of it um, feels a lot stronger. It feels um, like it's hitting in say about the fifty two percent range. Um, but yeah, as that intensity subsides, then those stewed fruits and baking spices start to come along. So now I'm starting to get the like the stewed raisins, figs, prunes, all those kind of things. I'm also getting a bit of like toffee apple as well. The tasting notes provided for this actually mention um, lychee. I wouldn't say that I'm getting lychee per se but there is also that type of like sugary sweetness that I could associate with the uh, uh, with with lychee so it does have like those sweeter sugary elements to it as well um, in terms of baking spices think along the lines of cinnamon nutmeg cardamom but at the same time the oak influence is definitely making itself present uh, after each like flavor profile that you're able to pick up so if you are somebody that's not really into like say tannic oaky whiskies um this might be a little bit on the intense side for you um i would definitely recommend um playing around with it maybe try adding water to it um or if you prefer um, a bit of ice to take that bite out um, i think that will help to kind of just balance that intensity out um Let's see, what else are we getting? All right, so again, uh, some more earthier elements are coming in now. Um, dark chocolate, um, tobacco, leather. Um, it has a bit of like that, that old dusty book kind of smell like when you kind of walk into like an old library or something like that it has that kind of muskiness to it all in all i have to say that there are quite a few similarities in this um to the tawny release although i will say the tawny so far for me has been like the benchmark of some of the fortified cask whiskies that starwood have done um, it is definitely heads and tails over this um, and look, and that's not to say that this is a bad whiskey, um, because it, 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 it isn't. It is actually a very enjoyable whiskey. But in terms of their, um, like the fortified releases, I think the Tawny is definitely a much more well-balanced and I guess overall more enjoyable um, whiskey, at least for my own taste. Moving along to the finish, um, again, it's it does get a little bit rough at times. So I am getting more of a heavy oak flavor there's a little bit of like barrel char and smoke coming in um, lots of um, white pepper spice and a touch of the the starwood banana there is actually quite a lot going on uh, in this glass um, it does open up quite a bit i have a feeling that this is probably something that you may want to give it more time to open up and breathe um, i probably should have maybe Poured the glass and let it sit for maybe about 15 to 20 minutes that way it could just open up a little bit maybe bring down those um those rougher edges um but look this is definitely something that i'm going to enjoy even though we're like we're starting into spring now but we're still having some cold nights at the moment so i think having um something like this is definitely going to help to keep warm at night but yeah i think to to tie it all up i think this is not going to be um, like my personal favorite um, Starwood whiskey, but it is still enjoyable nonetheless. And I do look forward to being able to play around with this some more and um, and just seeing how it goes um, opening up over time or maybe try um, playing around with some cocktails and things like that. 
um, I think the flavor profile would, would definitely lend itself more favorably to those types of um, experimentations. So that's it for me. My name is Andrew and I will see you all again on the next video. Get this. Well, since you made it this far into the video, why not go ahead and check out some of these other reviews that I have done. I will see you all again next time. Bye-bye.